Now, there's a very high salt content in this drinking well, and um, obviously the elephant knew this. The elephant very matter-of-factly splashed himself with this chalky, muddy water. It really distinguished him from any other elephants that could have been in the area. The theory apparently is, is that uh, this mud helps for parasites and insects and I've also heard that sometimes it just helps for the sun, the baking sun, because they are out there all day. And we moved on to an area called Salvadore, which is a clear water spring. Um, just look at this trunk. I mean, it is so agile, both when he was at the muddy areas and as well as he had this clean spring. We watched him for a while after that and once again, almost similar to when he arrived, uh, the first time we saw him, this lone, beautiful animal, it was late afternoon and there he was walking off into the sun with his new colouring, his, his new apparel. This is our regular troop of baboons that move along the forest line around Jesse's pools. It's quite a large troop and they were just on the edge of the, the Mapani forest. You could see that some of them were still quite dozy from the long night and uh, just really soaking up the sun and enjoying it. I've never really noticed how the parts on their heads move. Um, they can move their ears in, in a number of different directions, a bit like uh, a lot of other animals. You can still see they've got slightly thick coats, um, a few interesting hairstyles uh, coming through. The brow also moves quite considerably. They have quite a lot of control over their, over their face and I think it's, it's very functional. A lot of bonding happening in the early morning with these, with these baboons. A lot of cleaning and checking for parasites and insects. Such a, a functional part of their, of their social life. Um, strengthening bonds and a little bit of dominance is a play out of that as well. As they move through the forest there, past a nice big bull elephant. He wasn't 
perturbed by them at all. Um, just slowly moving on his own journey. And I'm sure that in time the troop will be back, sifting through his dung, picking out seeds and insects that go into it to get their own nourishment. So carefully interlinked, all having their role. How can I tell you of the forces which abound on this stony outcrop protruding from an ocean cold and fierce? Battered relentlessly for a billion years by water, wind and sun. And still it stands, as always emerged from the sea in its own place on earth. Malchas Island. And how can I tell you of the spectacle that stands before me? How can I explain the wonder of 50,000 birds? Cape Gannets. One can just stand and look and feel. And how can I tell you of the color in the light of the sun, the mass of beautiful color which reflects from each single bird, the snowy white, cream, yellow, soft, gold, black, and blue around an eye which holds the sun and life. green pit viper. This is a nocturnal animal that just rests up on low vegetation during the daytime. The Vogel's pit viper, often in the past mistaken for Pope's pit viper, including by myself. Uh, the fact that this one is sitting beautifully still for us has uh, given me the idea to just have a look at these scale patterns and uh, talk about some of the features that scientists look for when they're trying to identify snakes. Here we have a beautiful view of the underside of the head and you can see the larger, what we would probably refer to as belly scales that come up the underside of the snake and then taper out on the underside of the head here. Now these are called the ventrals and the number of ventrals is often used to help identify that individual to, to its species. The first few that you can see there start off small and get gradually bigger until they get to the full width of the belly of the snake. Now, in the modern analysis, those first few small ones are not counted. It's not until you get to the first ventral, which is equal in size to, to the other ventrals that go on down the belly of the snake, uh, the count starts. And then it continues on from there, right down the length of the snake until it gets to the anus of the snake, which is covered by a single scale, in this case, in some species by two scales. And that also is diagnostic uh, in telling species apart. Beyond that is considered to be the tail of the snake. One diagnostic feature in this species, in this Vogel's pit viper, is the lack of a red tail, which is found in many of the other species of green pit vipers. The 
dorsal scales, that's the scales on the upper side of the body. We can see the first row in this individual has a lovely yellow line through it. If you look closely, you can see that the yellow on these scales follows a little ridge which runs through the middle of the scale. This is a keel. The scalation is often referred to as keeled or unkeeled, and uh, this can also help you in identifying various species. At the front end, of course, it still has those pits. It is a pit viper. The small hole at the front is the nostril, but that large hole is a heat-sensitive pit. The presence of these obviously gives this group of snakes their name. With that pit, this snake is able to detect the heat from the bodies of its various prey animals.